thinking about this for several weeks, and it's natural to have expectations and to have hopes and to think about this. And on the way here from uh, Indiana, we, we took the very scenic route. We dipped into Texas to say uh, hello to some family and friends, and then we went back up and made our way through Arizona and then through uh, uh, Southern uh, California to Fresno. And along the way, I, I did a lot of thinking about the psychology and experience of expectations, right? It's, it's, and I came to some conclusions about expectations. It's almost impossible not to have expectations. I mean, you really have to work hard not having expectations. Um, it seems like a very natural and a very human thing to have expectations. So if it's natural and a very human experience to have expectations, then I think what we need to do is work on having positive expectations, or, or better said, healthy expectations, a healthier sense of expectations. Even as a people of faith, I think we could say it's good to have hopeful expectations. And as I was thinking about the psychology of expectations, I thought too that sometimes we have expectations and they are, are more hype and they don't live up to our best hopes, our best thoughts. And sometimes expectations uh, can be surpassed. We can expect, we can hope, and we get to that moment and it surpasses all of our expectations and those are wonderful moments. So it seems like those things happen with expectations. When I was uh, in Texas and I was saying hello to my, my father and my brother before we were uh, moving on and, and continuing our, our travels, and uh, my, my uh, brother asked me which way we were going to go out of West Texas. It takes forever to get out of West Texas. I don't know if you traveled in Texas much, but when you're going through West Texas, it's, uh, it seems like you're wandering in the wilderness and there's no... Uh, a hope of ever escaping uh, West Texas. But he said, uh, you know, if, if we were going one way, he asked, well, will you stop and see the thing? And I thought, well, the thing? What's the thing? And he said, oh, no. When you're going this particular way out of West Texas, you see the, the advertisements that, that are, are promoting the thing. And they say, you'll see a billboard, and it says, stop and see the thing at a certain exit, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of miles away. And you, and you go down several more miles, 30, 40 more minutes, and you see another big billboard. You see another big advertisement that, that promotes the thing. Stop at exit so-and-so and see the thing. And so your expectations are building. You're thinking, gosh, this thing must be fantastic. It must be awesome. And you come across several advertisements, billboards, postings promoting the thing. And you're thinking, gosh, this, this must be an excellent, awesome, extraordinary, monolithic thing. And you're wondering, what could this thing be? And you get to the exit, and my brother was telling me, and, and he says, and you stop, and you go into this, this room, and, and, and the thing is there on a table in the middle of the room. And do you know what the thing is? A rotary phone. <laughs> I meant to bring, we, we have a rotary phone in the home we just purchased, and I meant to bring that and, and tell the kids that this is the new iPhone. <laughs> just to see, because I don't think they know what the rotary is. <laughs> Sometimes our expectations don't live up to the hype, right? And so my brother was telling me that story, saying, hey, you can pass on seeing the thing. It's really, <laughs> it doesn't live up to all the hype. Sometimes our expectations can be surpassed. And so we made our way out of West Texas. And West Texas uh, is beautiful in its own unique way. And all of our regional areas are beautiful in their own unique way. And we were uh, planning a stop in the Grand Canyon. And I'd been there when I was five years old. And you know, I remember certain memories of the Grand Canyon going with my grandparents and, and uh, having a lot of fun. But this time when we got there, I, I, was, I, was, I was excited because I just couldn't remember the scope and the expanse of the Grand Canyon from my five-year-old memories. And it was exciting when we parked there, the whole family got out, and we were walking across the parking lot and going to one of the 
the outlooks uh, of the Grand Canyon. And we're all excited. Uh, Smitty is with us, our family dog, and she's excited. She's wagging, wagging her tail, and, and the kids are, and you get up there, and, and you, you look over the Grand Canyon, and it really is something that surpasses your expectations, and you can't take it in in one uh, 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 view. You have to kind of uh, rotate and, and try to take it in, and it's just breathtaking. It's just extraordinary, and it does live up and even surpass all of your expectations, and it's something we didn't expect, which was bonus. That evening when we were leaving the park, when we were traveling back to our hotel, that was a new moon phase. And so the stars were so bright and there were no lights around. And we stopped the car, we pulled off to a safe spot on the side, and we just, we were hoping to hear some coyotes, but we didn't hear any coyotes. But we got out there and you could just see the layers of stars and the shooting stars. And that was something that we didn't bank on that surpassed all of our expectations. And so in that sense, I think expectations can be hopeful. I think even expectations can be spiritual in that sense. That as a people of faith, we can have healthy, God-filled expectations. Joshua, a new leader, was leading the people, the Israelites, into a new land of expectations of milk and honey. And, and, and I was thinking about their experience as they were waiting to go into the promised land. And a part of the motivations for them to go on and go into the promised land were significant. Some of them were wanting to escape slavery. Some of them were wanting to escape poverty. Some of them were hoping for hope, sustenance, a new life, freedom, a place to call home. I think that's a beautiful thing in the scripture. And we as a people of God, we are embarking on a new journey too. We have expectations. Expectations of the new pastor. Expectations of the new church. It's very hard and difficult to avoid expectations. To escape expectations. To escape, to escape the gravity of expectations. So we're going to have expectations. They should be hopeful expectations. Expectations of love and grace and mutuality. That seems very needed when we embark on a journey together. To be able to extend grace when the expectations don't live up to all the hype. To extend forgiveness when forgiveness is needed. To extend love when love is needed. As a community of faith, that's what we're called to, to live into, to 